Yeah, okay. A dove and a pigeon is the same word. What was I saying? That was so bad. <laughs> what is Hi, I'm Dr. Francis. I'm a world-renowned wildlife nutritionist. You may not have heard of me, but your flirtatious dove sure has. So let's talk about how to have a conversation with your vet about fresh food feeding today. Brr, 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 brr. That sounds like a cat, though. <laughs> It may be difficult to talk to your veterinarian about introducing a fresh food diet to your dog or cat because a lot of them probably saw it being done really badly Aww. and then they had to deal with the consequences of a sick dog or cat, either because of contamination or probably most of the time nutrient deficiency or malnourishment. But if you believe that fresh food feeding is the best thing for dog or cat, then it's important to have a conversation with your vet about this. Your vet is your partner in your dog or cat's nutrition and health journey. You don't need them to get on board, but I would strongly suggest that they do get on board and that you all work together to make sure that your dog or cat is on the healthiest possible journey. Nutrition is a huge part of this, so you both need to be on the same line when it comes to this. So the first thing I recommend that you do is do your research about fresh food feeding. Now I'm using the word fresh food, whether you want to feed raw or whether you want to feed gently cooked or cooked. I'm just going to say fresh feeding overall. And whether you want to make it yourself or whether you want to buy a commercial one, that doesn't really matter in part of this discussion because the concerns from your vet will be the same no matter what. Do your research to make sure that you're ready to have this discussion on an even playing field with your vet. Now, every vet is different. Some may have more experience with fresh feeding and saw some benefits. They may be more open-minded. Some vets may just not have experienced it. And some may naturally be more into nutrition. Some may be a nutrition nerd. Some may not care about nutrition. Vets are people. They all have their different opinions and that's okay. That's why it's important to have a conversation and try and meet halfway so that you understand their concerns. And then it's your job to alleviate their concerns. Don't go in there trying to teach them stuff and say, you vets don't know nutrition. That is not a conversation that will be successful for you. So if your vet is not as open-minded or doesn't have as much experience with fresh feeding, they will usually tell you one out of three different reasons why they don't recommend raw feeding. The first one of which is it's not nutritionally balanced. Now this could be completely true, just like it could be for any kind of food that you give your dog or cat. So you need to make sure that whatever you're feeding is nutritionally balanced, whether it's AAFCO or FEDIAF. It has to meet one of these two requirements based on if the food is based in North America or if it's made in Europe. That's the main difference between AFCO and FEDIAF, plus or minus. So if you can assure that either the recipe you're cooking or the product that you're buying and feeding is AFCO or FIDIAF certified, then your vet should feel better because those are the same certifications that prescription vet food has as well. So they should feel a lot better as long as you ensure that those are the minimum standards. Make sure you have a brand you're interested in feeding so you can show, look, these are the nutrients, this meets the requirements similar to whatever food that the vet would sell. So that should be issue one, should be solved. If your vet is still very hesitant, then you can also volunteer having blood panels that are done regularly, nutrition panels as well. So you can actually monitor how your pet's uh, blood profile and nutrients are actually doing on this new diet. It's good to get your first test before and after maybe one month where they're on, on this new diet. So you can really see a difference there. Now there's one thing that's really important here is that it's been proven time and time again, and scientifically published as well, that pets on a raw diet will have higher blood counts for proteins. Things that are related to proteins will be higher in their blood reports. Now, this doesn't mean that the pet is sick. It doesn't mean that the pet has a damaged kidney. This is just a new baseline because they're getting a lot of high quality bioavailable protein in their diet. So this is a discussion to have with your vet as well to do multiple blood tests and then consider this the new baseline for your pet. Blood values that will probably be higher than the normal baseline will be hematocrit, creatinine, and BUN, which is blood urea nitrogen. These is very normal for it to be higher because they're just more protein. But as long as the kidneys are working fine, then you have nothing to worry about. Second issue your vet may bring up is 
safety and contamination risks. Now, this is absolutely an important conversation to have because they're right. There is a contamination risk, just like there is with feeding any kind of food. You may want to remind them that a lot of pet food recalls, canned food and kibble, are also recalled because of salmonella. So this risk exists everywhere, not just for fresh pet food, whether it's raw or whether it's cooked. Now, like I said before, this is a legit concern because there's very little controls over pet food and sanitation. Depending on where the pet food is made, like if it's made in the States, then there's a very strict rule that it cannot be contaminated with E. coli, cannot have salmonella, cannot have any of these bugs. So these should be tested regularly. But again, it's a lot of trust, right? You need to trust that whatever brand you're buying does their testing in place. Definitely ask them, what are your quality control measures for your raw ingredients and for your finished products? Whatever kind of food you're feeding, it's always good to contact the manufacturer and get their standard operating procedures on safety. And then you can show this to your vet. Show them that look, this company is doing everything they can to make sure that this food is safe. If they don't reply to you or if they send you a, uh, an SOP, standard operating procedure, that is not really convincing, then you may want to think about getting to another brand instead. The last part about contamination is parasites. Now, again, this is a legit risk depending on the origin of these raw ingredients. If you buy a food that has been frozen or that their raw materials have been frozen for two to three weeks, most parasites will be dead. Again, if you cook it, parasites will be dead. If you're feeding a raw diet that is fresh or that you make yourself, yes, this is a risk, this is a concern. If your pet is strong, healthy, not immunocompromised, hopefully they can deal with it, but this is not something that I can guarantee. It's not something that anyone can guarantee. So again, if you're not so sure about the provenance of the ingredients, reach out to your manufacturer. What are you doing to make sure my dog doesn't get parasites? They need to send you something that's convincing, that convinces you and your vet as well. So that is essential in your preparation toolkit before you talk with your vet partner. And the last thing that some vets will tell you about fresh food feeding is that there's no evidence that this is actually helpful. Well, this was true maybe 10 years ago or, and all the time before that, but now there is so much scientific evidence that fresh food is so helpful. We know that a properly balanced fresh food diet can be helpful for gut health, has a more diverse and healthy microbiome, has a more even tempered behavior, uh, as long as you make sure that these are safe and nutritionally balanced, you have so many health benefits, less disease, less prone to becoming obese, um, less cancer, they can live longer as well. This is all scientifically published and you can't blame your vet for not necessarily knowing this because there's new papers coming out every day and they also need to read all the papers about pet health in general. So if you want to help convince them, then feel free to find some of the papers and print them out or just give them the citation Discuss it with them. And again, don't go there trying to teach them something because that's not going to work. They studied for seven years. They know what they're talking about. You just need to be there and show them some information. Let them come up with their own conclusion. Remember, they're not your teacher. You're not their teacher. You are partners in your pet's health journey. And the third partner in this journey is actually the food that you're buying or making for your pet, right? Nutrition is so important, which is also why it's very important that you and your vet are on the same page on what you're feeding for your dog or cat. I hope this video helped. Don't be scared to have this conversation with your vet. Remember, they're there because they care about your pet, just like you do. Subscribe below, like this video, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and even TikTok. Bye-bye.